Let's see just how many cards we can draw. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to the official kickoff of draw week. If you guys do not know which challenge this is, essentially the goal is to, to draw as many cards as possible in a single turn. It does have to be a single turn. As such, we do have some very interesting submissions and we will get into that in just a second. But if you would like to submit for this challenge, you certainly can do so. We've got a discord link down below. Please feel free. Uh, follow that link, you can join. There is a challenge submissions channel that is open to absolutely everybody, and we would love to see what kind of brews you can come up with. Like I said, we've got some amazing ones this week. Also, as a quick reminder, we do have the D&D uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms bundle giveaway going on right now until August 5th. If you would like to enter that, you can check out our website, It Resolves MTG, for all the details. There is an article at the bottom of the homepage that you can read there. We also have our Patreon link if you would like to support the channel, we'd greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, guys, let's kick off Challenge Week. All right, guys, we are going to kick off this week with our old friend, Breaded and Fried, over on Discord. Thank you very much, Breaded and Fried. I really do appreciate your submission, and I'm very intrigued. This one is very cool. Um, the idea is built off of essentially Lich's Mastery as well as Accomplished Alchemist. And I'm going to do my best to explain this. Breaded and Fried did a very solid description or, or job describing it in the chat, so please go check that out for more details. But essentially, the idea is... You play Lich's Mastery. Now, obviously, you do want to have the Accomplished Alchemist out first, but the idea is that you basically use this and then gain a bunch of life, which allows you to draw a bunch of cards because of the effect that whenever you gain life, you do draw that many cards. Now, uh, the idea is the amount of life that you've gained that turn gets produced into mana, which then allows you to play things like Chromatic or Ori, uh, which then basically says any mana counts for any color, uh, and then you can draw cards for each color among the permanents you control. That's not super relevant, but it does provide a little extra card draw. Uh, the idea is to draw essentially most of your deck, uh, and then as soon as you get close to it, you use Bowmat Courier's ability, which you can play thanks to the ability on Chromatic Ori, since we have no red lands, uh, to discard your hand. And then you use Clear the Mind, <clears throat> excuse me, to shuffle everything back into your deck and then draw a card. Uh, now, there are some interesting pieces to this that I'm not 100% sure will work, but we do have Weather the Storm, which could very, very quickly go off in this kind of deck. Uh, I did do just a little bit of testing. The idea here is definitely to get the Accomplished Alchemist out first. Uh, if you don't, essentially, you really run the risk of just having to sacrifice all your permanents and then losing the game with the Lich's Mastery. So. We're going to do the best we can. Uh, we do have a little bit of learn mechanic thanks to cram session. So we do have some things here in the uh, the sideboard as well. But without further ado, first of all, again, Brennan and Fried, thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. But let's go ahead. Let's jump into the three games and see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And as a reminder, if you do win these challenge weeks, we do actually send you a, a free little proxy pack. Normally, those are only available through our Patreon, but I thought we'd give it out, uh, give those out as a little bit of a thank you for participating and just providing us with some really, really cool builds, which you guys always do. So thank you guys so much. Get to kick things off here with a nice little Lanoir Elf. It looks like we were against potentially Mono Green, uh, which does make me think Elf which is truth truth be told a little scary but uh we're gonna do the best we can here uh the i we could do a lot of different things um i say a lot i think the idea is definitely going to be to grim tutor and we need to get the accomplished alchemist here uh we do absolutely need another land at some point so i'm hoping we can just draw that off the top here but we will see we will see uh we do have a nice little start though at some point, we do need another black land for the uh, Lich's Mastery. That is pretty important. Uh, and we'll see. Unfortunately, it's about the best we can do. I'm going to go ahead and play this out. Uh, this does provide us with a way that we could uh, utilize the Bowmat Courier at some point if we would like. Uh, we can also just use Sudden Spinnerets to uh, block something here, if need be. 
So just some things to think about. We could potentially take something out here, but we'll see. <laughs> um, definitely not hitting a land there was a bit uh, a bit sad. Uh, we absolutely need some more lands, so we'll, we'll see what we can get. Um, if we can get one more, we're actually going to be in okay shape. It's not going to be great, but uh, hopefully it will give us a bit of an out here, but this uh, this Nissa is going to be quite scary. Okay, there is another land. We are going to go ahead and play it for uh, black. That does provide us with the Lich's Mastery mana. And here we are now uh, at least getting set up. It's not perfect, obviously, but it does actually get us a little bit closer. If we draw any land off the top, we could Lich's Mastery right away. I don't think that's going to be the play, to be honest. I think the play might just be to Accomplished Alchemist here. Get another creature on the board and hopefully not die to whatever it is they're about to do, which is most likely just attack. Uh, but that's okay. I uh, I have high hopes. Uh, worth noting, everybody in this challenge is getting a default of one card drawn every turn, obviously. Uh, but it's going to be a little tricky to actually keep track of everything. So we're going to do the best we can, but we'll see. All right. They are going wide, my friends, going extraordinarily wide. Let's see if they actually attack in here. I'm assuming yes. Uh, that's very scary. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think we're just going to die. Um, <laughs> don't really think we have a good way around this, uh, truth be told. I don't think they should attack either. No, OK, they didn't. All right. Um, hmm. So we can do some fun stuff here. Uh, let's do this. It's going to gain us some life. Uh, do we? Hmm. So we do have the spinneret actually to untap some things as well. Let's do this. Uh, let's, I guess, tap it for black. I don't love that, though, because we're just going to essentially die. Um, can do this to untap this. Uh, we can do... Oh, this is scary. Okay, we'll do this. <laughs> um, play this. And that's it. That's all we can do. All that and we didn't draw anything. But we do have a pretty substantial board. Not that it matters. We're just going to die this turn. But <laughs> uh, you get the idea. Um... We could have played the Lich's Mastery sooner and therefore drawn potentially some more cards, but I think we would have netted uh, a zero mana. That might have been my mistake, though, Breaded and Fried. We might could have gotten somewhere with that, but we will see. We will see. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We are absolutely dead this turn. Um, the trick is when they attack, they're allowed... To, we then have to sacrifice permanence for every uh, point of life they deal to us. Uh, and crucially, we can sacrifice the Lich's Mastery, despite it having Hexproof. Hexproof does not affect our ability to target it. It only affects the opponents. And therefore, this is a very, very, very lethal attack. Um, which is fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, the Nav Navigator's Compass does come in handy for things like this, though, where uh, we could basically turn this into a green source or a red source at some point if needed. But... Chromatic Ori kind of defeats that purpose, I think, at some point. Okay, um, pass. So, <laughs> I, I mean, doesn't really matter. We're just kind of dead here. So I'm going to go ahead and concede. They got this one. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And this is not a super exciting hand, uh, but it does provide some scry. We're going to try it and hope that we're not against a super fast deck. Uh, and we'll just see. Uh, I'm going to throw that on the bottom. We do need some uh, just kind of creatures and things to throw out there at some point. So let's do that first. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this because we know it's going to enter tapped. We don't have a basic land in our hand to let this come into play untapped. So figure now's a good time. Uh, that's not bad. Um, let's do this. Um... Let's throw this out there. I am going to go ahead and cram session here uh, for a number of reasons. But most importantly, this does give us a way to pull things like environmental sciences, which then allows us to guarantee another land, which I think is really, really important at this point. Um, we do obviously need to get the accomplished, uh, whatchamacallit, that card, 
uh, Al Alchemist. Uh, that way we can start this little uh, life gain train, but theoretically we might be able to get there. There's a clear of the mind. Interesting. Um, all right, I think we are going to go ahead and do this, and we're just going to go ahead and pull the Alchemist. Um, and... No, we'll cancel. We'll not attack. Uh, this allows us to protect it in certain circumstances. Probably not going to do anything here, but I figure why not? This really is very truthfully the way to untap the accomplished alchemist. This is the way to kind of gain that infinite mana. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Give me a land. All right, that is a land. That's good. Um, let's play you. And we'll just play this out tap. So this is going to get us the Lich's Mastery next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, can actually do that first and I believe still get... We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I, I have hopes. I have high hopes. Okay, there's a green land. It's actually not bad. Let's do this. Uh, so we could do this. I don't love that, though, because then we're very, very susceptible. Um, so I think the play for now is to do this. This does gain us some life, uh, which technically improves the uh, the accomplished alchemist here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, like we could play it now, but I just don't love that idea. If they deal any amount of damage to us, we're kind of in a bad place. Uh, so I'm just going to pass. I'm going to take this one and be very, very careful. We don't want to lose the Alchemist, but we very crucially don't want to lose the game before we can draw a bunch of cards. Technically, we did draw two cards that turn, though. So I guess I will mark that down uh, as our starting point here. Um... And part of me is hoping we can kind of sneak in a kill with this Bloodthirsty Aerialist uh, with the Sudden Spinnerets. We'll see. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I have high hopes again. Um, truth be told, just any good solid like one mana life gain spell could do quite a bit for us here. Uh, let's see what they do. They did not attack. Interesting. I wonder why they didn't. Um... I mean, maybe they just didn't want to risk it. I, I'm not sure. Um, so we can shuffle in and draw. It doesn't seem like a bad play, actually. Um, just to to get further down into our deck here. So let's do this. Uh, thankfully, this does produce mana of any color, so that's not really a problem. These also untap, so we can do this and still actually get an attack in if we'd like. Life goes on. Okay. Um, that's going to bode well for next turn. So I think the play is to pass. Uh, saving these sudden spinnerets just in case they do kind of go for an attack here, we might be able to get something. Um, ooh, that's scary. Uh, yeah. You got it. Um, so they were waiting. They knew that was going to happen, so they were waiting to attack with the Aerialist, which makes quite a bit of sense. Um, we are going to hold off on the Sudden Spinnerets, is my guess. We could double up and try and, like, three for one it, but I don't think that matters. Um, I think we just wait. My turn. All right. Play that, and I think this is the moment we just go for it right it's not great but we're gonna try <laughs> uh so we're gonna play lich's mastery uh and hope they don't kill the accomplished alchemist uh i i'm really hoping we can make this work for you breaded and fried because this is such a sweet little combo um if it works we did already use the clear of the mind but i'm glad we did because it got us to the point where we could play this this turn which i think is very crucial all right um Let's tap you for green. Let's make sure we're tapping correctly here. Uh, this is going to gain us four, which is going to draw us four cards, which puts us up to technically five cards drawn this turn. Okay. Um, no life gain. <laughs> um, all right, so we've gained four life this turn. 
Uh, let's see. How can we do this? I don't even think we can. Uh, unfortunately. Okay, well, maybe we can. So, let's do this. We're gonna play some stuff out here. First. We're gonna utilize one of that green to do this. We can tap this for black, then. As long as they don't kill it. Please don't kill it. Please don't kill it. Please don't kill it. Please don't kill it. Um... Okay, sweet. Uh, let's tap it for black. Let's do this. We're gonna just search up any life gain spell. Any life gain spell at all. Uh, might be cram session. Um, actually, no, it's probably life goes on, right? Yeah, I think it's life goes on. All right. Reach one life we've lost. We do have to sacrifice a thing. That's okay. Uh, oh, we have to sacrifice three, of course. Uh, so we're going to do that. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. All right, we're going to add four to this to bring us up to nine. Uh, we do still have a green mana available, so that's very good. Um, which can untap this. So let's do that. This is... A difficult deck to run, by the way, breaded and fried. It is interesting. Very, very interesting. We do have Haze of Pollen here as well. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, they got it. Um, all right, but this does gain us three more life, which does put us up to 12 cards. Oh, man, I wish we could play Weather the Storm right now. Um, all right. That's fine. Uh, we are going to have to discard some stuff here, which sucks, because uh, we're probably going to take a good bit of damage next turn. The only trick with this combo is that we just don't have... Like, it burns out pretty quick, uh, and it's actually just very difficult to make work anyway. Uh, yeah, but you know what? Honestly, 12 cards for like this kind of combo, not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we'll discard you for now. We're going to end up losing a lot of life this turn, though. Discard you. Actually, it should have been the Overgrown Tomb, to be brutally honest. That was kind of a mistake, but that's okay. We're, we're dead. <laughs> uh, next turn, this is the problem, is that now they just, uh, they just, no, cancel. Um, no, I keep not wanting to, basically, uh, now if they attack, we just are super dead, uh, because we have to discard basically all of our hand, and they've got tons of stuff here. Spinnerets isn't really doing anything. Yeah, I think, uh, Bread and Fried, I think 12 is as good as it's gonna get this game, so we're gonna go ahead and concede here. We'll jump into game number three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and uh, we're looking to beat 12 cards. I think we can do it. Uh, do I like this hand, though, is the, the interesting piece, and truthfully, no, I don't. It does have some lands, though, uh, and so I feel like the opportune thing is probably just to keep it. We can learn with the, the cram session here and get uh, guaranteed lands on turn three. I think that this is probably just the best bet. Um, so we're going to go with this. We're going to hold on to this Navigator's Compass for the time being uh, and probably just go with this. Um, this gives us both colors of mana, so we've got a decent start here. Um, now we will do this, though. Uh, and let's... Let's make sure we do the right thing. Let's get environmental sciences. I think this is just, we do need to get to that six mana pretty quickly. So any any amount of help that we can get there is probably gonna be worth it. Um, let's throw this down and we will go ahead and environmental sciences pulling a swamp, which gives us our third black. Uh, so we are guaranteed to have the three black for the Lich's Mastery. And now it's just a matter of we really need the alchemist. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, we'll go ahead and play this out, and let's go get that Alchemist now with the Grim Tutor. Just gives us that guarantee, and uh, yeah. I mean, we're not in bad shape here. We've, we've got the pieces. It's just a matter of can we truly make this go off uh, the way that we need it to. Um, and I don't know yet. We're gonna, we're gonna try. 
Um, let's get green here. Let's throw the alchemist out. I'm very worried about what they will have. Uh, truth be told, they are a black green deck, so removal is going to be pretty heavy. Yep, there's the binding. Bad sign for us, people. Bad sign for us. All right. But there's another Grim Tutor. <laughs> so let's go uh, Grim Tutor up another Alchemist. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and play this Arazka Relic out. Uh, this just guarantees us an extra mana source, essentially, as well as some life gain really, really quickly. So I think that's worth it. Um, huh. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, so we just play this out, I think. And... Oof. I don't want to sacrifice either of these, but I think we do this first. It's going to gain us a life, which just keeps us out from just like straight dying here, uh, which I think is kind of worth it. This also just is going to allow us to create that blue mana if we need to. Ooh, bad, 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 bad. OK, uh, so eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this does kill. So we are going to have to pop the, the relic here. Uh, or actually, no, it doesn't kill necessarily. Oh, it does. It gives death touch. Okay. So we have to do this. Uh, it puts us up to 14, which still technically kills us. <laughs> uh, oh man, this is terrible. We're just dying all the time. Um, I mean, we just take the kill where we can get the kill, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's happening. Oh, breaded and fried. I'm so sorry, man. I I really like this deck. It just I don't think is gonna gonna pan out the way we want it. Um, let's do this. I'm just gonna play the Lich's Mastery <laughs> at this point. I think that's probably okay. Uh, and we're just super dead here. Ah, oh, sad day. Well, we did get uh one card technically. So, ugh, I hate that. I hate that so much. Um. No, actually, I'm sorry, we did get two, but that's okay. Yeah, let them attack, let them do their thing. Sad day. Uh, unfortunately, didn't happen. I'm just gonna go ahead and concede then. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about this deck for just a second. All right, so breaded and fried. First of all, again, thank you so much for the submission. I really do appreciate everybody who is uh, continuously submitting to these challenge weeks. I think they're really fun. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I definitely am. It's a lot of fun to to, to highlight you guys a little bit, get you guys involved, but also then uh, give you guys a little prize support and that kind of thing. So thank you guys so much. Thank you again to breaded and fried. The deck today was interesting. Uh, it has a really cool idea, and I love Lich's Mastery. And to be fair, we got to do, got to see it kind of do its thing in game two. But it, it's, I think, the inherent nature of these challenge weeks that uh, when you build a combo, especially something like this, you're risking a lot. Not only is it difficult to pay off, but it's also difficult to manage past the turn that it is played. Uh, and while I think um, I probably didn't play it perfectly, I think in game two, we did the best we could and we got to see it do its thing. It did draw 12 cards, which is a start. Uh, and so Brandon and Fry, congratulations. You are currently in the lead. So way to be there. Uh, but guys, thank you so much again. If you would like to submit for any of these challenge weeks, we do them every single week. Please feel free. The Discord link is down below. We have that challenge sub submissions channel open for you, uh, and we'd really great greatly appreciate uh, seeing what you guys can come up with. But guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate it again, Brandon and Fried, and we will see you on Wednesday for part two, as well as the announcement for next week as to what that challenge will be. But until then, guys, thank you so much. Hope you have a fantastic week.